Hello, Legacy Sabers. Marsh here. So today we're going to talk about how to graph absolute value functions using transformations. Um, what you want to have on you is your notes and your foldable today. Our essential question today, how can I graph an absolute value function without having to substitute numbers in for x? So last time we looked at graphing absolute value, we had to find what was in the middle. And then what we did is we then plugged all of those x values in to get y values. Today, what we're going to talk is called transformations. So what you may have noticed is that there is some kind of moving that consistently happened with our graphs. And this is going to cause us to not have to continually plug in numbers. The first one I want to talk about is what's known as a vertical shift up. What you will see is it will look like f of x plus k. So this plus k right here is what we're going to want to focus on. And what this will do is it will shift the graph up k units. So for example, here is my absolute value function, the parent table. Um, and what we're going to do is let's just a little, do a little scratch of three dots in that parent table. So we know that these three dots are on our parent table, right? Because think about it, your parent table is y equals absolute value of x. That's with anything, not anything any happening to the function. So if I plug negative 1 in, I'll get a 1. If I plug 0, if I plug in 1, I'll get a 0 and a 1. Now, this plus 3, what it's going to do is it's going to take the graph and shift it up three units. Now, if I want to shift this graph up three units, how is that going to affect my parent table? It'll add to the y's, right? So we're going to add three to the y's, and then I'm going to write out my new parent, my new child table. So the x's are no different, but my y's will be there. And then let's graph those dots. Let's see if this graph looks like it's shifted up three. So I'm going to go negative one, one, two, three, four, 0, 3, 1, 4, and here is my new V. Let's take a look at the opposite way. What about vertical shift down? Now, if I am shifting down, that would mean that it's going to be f of x minus k, so absolute value of x minus k. Ultimately, what this is going to do is exactly what you think it's going to do. It's going to shift the graph down k units. So again, here is my absolute value parent. So let's go ahead and fill that out here. 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay. And if we're going down 3 units, I think we need to subtract 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 from all of my y's. I'm going to get still the same x's. I'm going to get negative 2, negative 3, and negative 2. Let's go graph those dots. So negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 2. And then I'm going to just connect all those dots there. Slash extend the arms. Notice the graph looks like it went down three units from where it was. Now you're thinking, well, Marsh, we've moved up, we moved down. Can I move left or right? Yes, we can. So we can shift left. What that's going to look like is you're going to see a plus h or plus a number inside of the function. It's going to look like x plus a number was placed in there. And what's going to happen is you're going to shift the graph left h units. So right here I have f of x of x plus 3. Now notice there is a plus and yet we're shifting left. It's kind of backwards and we kind of discussed this when we did absolute or linear functions when we did translated ones. Similar idea here. So again, I'm going to write out my parent table. Now, if I'm shifting the graph left, and it looks like I'm moving left three units, right? Um, well, it's not going to affect the y's, right? It's going to have to affect the x's. And I can't add three, because that would actually move me to the right. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract three. I'm gonna get negative four, negative three, negative two, and then one, zero, one. Let's try that. One, two, three, four, one. Oh, you know what? I gotta get my parent. Forgot about my parent there. Get that one to draw. There we go. Notice there are arrows on these because they do go forever left, forever right. It looks like that graph has been picked up and moved left. Now, I also have the option to move to the right. So right here, I want to be able to horizontally shift to the right. So what you're going to see is it's going to look like someone substituted x minus h for the x in the function. And what this honestly does is it shifts the graph right h units. Now, let's go ahead and try our parent. So here's my parent table. And I need to move to the right. Again, notice it's opposite of what we think. It's a minus 3, but that means to move to the right. It is opposite. So what I'm going to do is add 3 to my x's. I'm going to get 2, 3, 4, 1, 0, 1. Let's go ahead and graph those dots. So 2, 1, 3, 0, 4, 1. And then again, I'm going to connect the dots here. There we go. Now, we've moved it up, we've moved it down, we've moved it left, we've moved it right. Notice, however, we haven't changed the arms at all. We haven't changed what, quote unquote, the slope of the arms. Let's take a look at how to accomplish that. So first thing we have is what's known as a vertical stretch. What that means, it's going to look like the arms have literally been picked up and stretched, kind of like a rubber band, if you want to imagine that. And what you're going to see is a number in front of the function, and that number is going to have to be bigger than 1. So what this is going to ultimately do is it's going to multiply the y values by a factor of a. So again, we need our parent table. And then what we're going to ultimately do is we're going to do exactly what it says. We're going to multiply by a factor of 2. So I'm going to rewrite it out. No x's are changing, just the y's. So I'm going to get negative 1, 2, 0, 0, and 1, 2. And then what's going to happen is this pattern's going to have to keep going. So notice the slope, quote unquote, is up 2 over 1. Now, be careful, I don't like calling it a slope because once we continue in our career as mathematicians, um, these transformations are gonna keep on showing up. They're gonna keep on being for vertical stretches and we're gonna do stretches with um, quadratics and cubics and everything else. And none of those, not all of them, have a slope that is constant. So I like to make sure I call these our stretch. But since this is a linear function, kind of, we are able to actually say that this graph does have kind of a slope in the regards. Now this is a vertical stretch. We want to also be able to compress this. What this is going to look like is like someone basically sat on the graph and then kind of made it, you know, kind of like go down a little bit. Um, what you're going to see is that it's going to be a coefficient in front of the function, and that coefficient is going to be between 0 and 1. Ultimately, it's going to look like it's a fraction. Now, be very careful. Don't assume fraction is compression because a fraction could be 5 divided by 2. Okay, so be very careful there. What this is ultimately going to do, just like last time, is it's going to multiply the y values by a factor of a. So... Let's go ahead and write out our parent table. Okay, and just like last time, I'm going to multiply the y's by a half. Because that is my a value. So we get one half, 
zero, one half. So negative one, point five, there, there. And then again, I kind of have to follow it. So for every one over, I'm going to go up a half. Notice it is up one over two. Okay, so this slope, this number right here, technically you can call it the slope of the lines on a absolute value function. However, again, note that's not going to be the case as we continue. So let's make sure we don't connect those dots. But in a way, we can, I'm not going to lie to you, it is technically the slope of those lines. Okay. The last one I want to talk about is the reflection over the x-axis. So what this is going to look like is a negative in front of the entire function. And what that's going to do is it's going to reflect the graph across the x-axis. So for our last one, again, just like the last couple, let's go ahead and write out our parent table. And what this is going to do is it's literally going to change the sign on our y values. So I'm just going to tack some negatives on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the point zero, zero, negative one, negative one, one, negative one. There you go. It is a gangster B. It's upside down. Notice it's been reflected across the X axis, just like that. Um, we can have what's known as reflection over the y-axis. However, we're not going to cover that just yet because reflection over a y-axis on a absolute value graph is quite absolutely boring because it's literally the same graph. So let's try a couple of examples. We want to describe all the transformations and determine the vertex. So I have f of x equals 1 half absolute value of x minus 1 plus 2. So first thing, let's describe what's happening to the graph. So this one half, first of all, I notice it is a vertical compression, right? Oop. And I'm going to mark that's of one half. We are shifting to the right, right? Because it's minus in there. So right one. I just write right one. And then I'm going up two. Okay, so now with my parent table, I am going to write it out five so I can get a nice big graph. So I'm going to go all those numbers and then two, one, zero, one, two. Now I got to take care of each of these. And here's the thing I need to definitely tell you guys is we need to make sure that you take care of stretches and reflections before you move. I like to remind myself that you have to stretch before you run. Otherwise you get a leg cramp. So stretch before we run. I need to first take care of that vertical compression. So I'm going to multiply by a half on the y's. I then have to move to the right and I have to go up two. Okay. So notice how I just kind of made no marks on my information. So first thing I'm going to go add one. So I'm going to subtract or negative one, negative two, excuse me, plus one is negative one. I'll get zero, one, two, and three. And then two times a half is one, plus two is three. Um, then I'll get two and a half, two, two and a half, and three. So let's graph those, that new child table zero two and a half there we go whoops one two right there and right there it looks like and then we're going to connect some dots all right let's graph let's write some stuff out so vertex, first thing I got for a vertex is my turnaround point, which is right here. 
it looks like it's one, two. So one, two. Uh, I do want to point out that that is honestly the transformation of right one up two, because normally our vertex would be at zero, zero. And if we move it around, then we get right one up two. Um, my intercepts I only had one and he was at zero comma two and a half. My boundedness, he's bounded below. Um, this is a neither for this graph, not even nor odd. Um, extrema, remember that is the max and the min. This guy has a minimum and it's an absolute and local. And its dot is one, two. Domain is negative infinity to infinity. My range looks like it starts at two goes to positive infinity. And then it looks like I have increasing intervals from one to positive infinity. And I am decreasing from negative infinity to one. Remember X values for that information. Let's try one more. So again, we need to do descriptions. First thing I notice is there is a negative sitting out in the front. So that tells me that we definitely need to say that we are reflecting in x-axis. Um, we are going to do a vertical stretch of 2. And that is because of this 2 right here. Um, it looks like I have to go left three and it looks like I have to go down one. Remember these are, this guy is opposite of what you think it should be. So again, let's write out that parent table. And what's cool about that parent table is it's never going to change. Every absolute value will always have this for its parent. So first thing I got to take care of my stretching and I got to take care of my reflecting before I start to move. So I'm going to change the reflecting in the x-axis, so that means every y is going to turn negative. I am going to show that I'm going to multiply by 2. That's taking care of that vertical stretch there. i got to go left 3, so I'm going to subtract 3 from the x's. And I'm going to go down 1 on the y's. Let's go ahead and fill out our new table. I'm going to do some very simple math here. I'm going to be honest, guys. Sometimes I mess these up, but I think I'm doing all right. There we go. Notice we do have that mirror image still happening. Um, negative 5, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 5. Negative 4, negative 3. Negative 3, negative 1. Um, negative two, negative three, and negative one, negative one. Now notice, it is upside down, which is what it should be, right? We should be upside down. And we also should be stretched. So first thing, my vertex looks to be negative three, one. Oh, excuse me, negative three, negative one, right there. Um, we don't have any x-intercepts again. Um, and you know what? My y-intercept seems to be a little off. But if I follow my pattern, it would be right here, which is the dot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 0, negative 7. Um, again, if your graph would cut through the x-axis, you just kind of have to guess if it doesn't come out pretty. Um, boundedness. I am bounded above on this graph. It is definitely a neither on there. My extrema, he has an absolute and local maximum. And its value is negative 3, negative 1. My domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. My range is negative infinity to negative 1. Bracket on there. And then... For the final, increasing. 
we are increasing from negative infinity to negative 3 and decreasing from negative 3 to positive infinity. Lots of information today. But that is the end. We will be doing some more practice. And trust me, these transformations, they are going to keep coming back over and over and over. So you guys are going to get very comfortable with them by the end of this year. Um, until I see you next, I will see you later, Sabres.